let's record this session. Okay. Hello. So I am sharing my screen. Can you see? I just prepared this small presentation and uh, for for this meeting and I'll just uh, want to review some of the prior meetings. Uh, I, I will say topics. Uh, first, the, the, the motivation that bring us all to, to, to this group. Then we ha had a deep drive, dive into the space crease and how it can manage, manage uh, outdoors. Then, uh, we we had the opportunity to to put our hands on uh, this space crease. We I, I think we all should thank uh, Andrea Bolini for uh, his work on these demonstrations. Uh, we then at that time we could uh, see the, the the installation process configuration and some examples uh, on. Uh, what we could do with the space crease. Then uh, on our last meeting, we uh, spoke a little bit about the, the space uh, data model, uh, about uh, our needs uh, for some specific entities, what entities could be in, inserted or, or uh, be as default in the, the space. And today, uh, I, I propose, uh, we, we on our last meeting, uh, proposed this topic to, to discuss the data model uh, the for entities. Uh, um, one um, one uh, topic that, that was uh, spoke on our last meeting was uh, the, the space used cases. We were only um, concerned about the, the crease um, aspect, but we, we need to always consider that this space has a lot of use cases. In this case, inst institutional repository or data repository when you can install uh, um, store uh, data streams or something like that. Uh, digital can be used as a digital library or as a create system. Uh, I will skip this step. This is some of the um, concepts that, that we um, Defined entity, entity identifier, what is an entity identifier, content, what is a field type, or what could be complex fields or entity relationship. This is uh, some definition. And um, this is the, the main concerns that we all have been uh, spoke, speak, speaking on our. Um, meetings, um, the, the data model complexity versus, versus the flexibility, what we want to, to where we want to draw a, a line in here. Um, also the need to have nested metadata uh, because this space only relies on this flat metadata. And um, we need to we, we need this space to be more config, configurable, and uh, what is should be the, the default and what should be uh, uh, available to the user interface, and uh, how entities can relate and with, with each other, what is the, the data model that uh, could support that. So uh, we made uh, analysis. It is in this document. You can all um, see, comment, uh, criticize, whatever you, you feel you need to do. And um, we, on this document, raise some uh, questions 
some regarding this space and how we can evolve and some rely on this space crease. Um, we think that uh, this space crease uh, has uh, uh, some uh, redundancy in this structure and um, it can, I, I, we think it can be uh, <laughs> more normalized. This means that uh, this space crease can uh, evolve into a much complexer uh, system. And uh, sorry. And uh, this space, um, it, it also has uh, some issues that, that uh, could be improved. Um, and that that um, that is on uh, our um, document um, that is, is it is shared and can be discussed and can be uh, commented. I, I will stop here. I will. I will, I, I have more slides, but uh, I will uh, stop here this presentation. Uh, and I want to focus on these questions and. Uh, I think we would like to 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 get near to to some decisions what we we want to do uh, before um, uh, before our next step. Yeah, thank you, Paulo. Um, and and I think these are really good questions that you brought up. Um, uh, and I, I agree with some of the, with some of the points that you pointed out in the document here around like the normalization issue. I think that's there's definitely some improvements that could be made um, in the the giant table example that you had in the document with all the nulls. Um, that's obviously <laughs> not the, ideal. This um, uh, team that team one is. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I can zoom in. in. Okay. Yep, that same table is the one I was. Um, okay, this, I, I do see. Go ahead. This this is the 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 G Dyna G, G Dyna values. Mm -hmm. I think it's Java dynamic values. Uh, not sure, um, but uh, this this table is uh, one of the the core tables of the space crease. This is the the table where they relate. Um, fields or field values with other entities we you you can see project uh, researcher page or profile organization unit dynamic and they all have new values and also uh, they have text value uh, link if uh, this was a link uh, this is trunc truncated uh, trimmed uh, I can see file name, double value. This is an, an American value, I think so. Uh, okay. But the, for, for example, this is a core table in the space crease and I think it should be uh, uh, normalized. But the, this will increase the complexity of the space crease. I'm not sure if... Uh, uh, they are willing to 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 do that analysis yeah I, I just i think that's a good thing to point out so I, I agree with that that point that that does look like it needs some normalization um should we decide to go with a structure that's that's similar um so i agree with that um i, I guess i was just kind of point, pointing that to others as well that that's a point that uh, we hadn't really discussed in the past or hadn't dug into as much in this meeting um, is just around how how this this table is structured and whether uh, we're okay with this sort of way of doing things or whether we'd want to minimally normalize this sort of structure or or um, be inspired by um, how D space Chris has done things to do things in a different way in some ways, which seems to be what you're kind of gone towards in this document is the inspiration side of things. Uh, but 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 yeah. So I just I just want to note my agreement here. I don't have anything else to say about that. It's a shame Andrea um, isn't here to talk with us. I don't know, if, Claudio, if you have any 
anything to pass on from Andrea around some of these concepts no, uh, or we should wait for Andrea at some yes, point? Yes, what, uh, uh, first of all, I'm not a, a technician. I am uh, an, a domain expert, uh, but yep. uh, what, I, what, I can, uh, what I can say uh, is that uh, when uh, this structure has been uh, decided, it was uh, because uh, uh, creating uh, uh, a, a normalized uh, normalized table, for example, this uh, this kind of table can be uh, divided in uh, many tables, uh, and uh, we have to join them. Uh, but uh, uh, we have uh, bad results uh, in performance. So yes, uh, that, that so, it's uh, yes. So we decided that it's not. Uh, uh, a, a, a good structure for a database artist, but uh, as concerned performance, uh, we have uh, better results uh, using these structures, uh, this, this structure, than uh, using uh, 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 more atomic tables. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, thank you for pointing that on, Claudio. And that, that would be good to note here in this document. Um, I can write up a note as well on that, because it'd be good to understand why the structure was initially created in that way. So thank you. I'm curious though to hear from others as well who've reviewed this document to see if anything has popped out to you as being something we should concentrate on a little bit more, discuss a little bit more, or something that you either agree strongly with or disagree strongly with, or just have questions about. Not all uh, at the same time, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we have, uh, at least in, in our case, uh, discussed uh, these this aspects also regarding the experience we have with uh, the space crease and also the knowledge we have with the space. And there is uh, really a need to, to have some kind of uh, simplified version of the space crease into the space. Um, regarding the design of the, the database, I'm not the, the proper person to, to be able to discuss, but I think we should um, focus on simplicity and uh, flexibility as a, a core aspect of this change in the design of uh, the, the database and also the data model of this space. Um, I, th I think also regarding the experience uh, with the space crease in terms of development, uh, we have now the, the capacity to look at this and say, okay, this is better this way. These parts we can simplify, we can make this more simple in the space. So I think we have already some uh, things where we can look at and try to um, orient in, in in some aspects if we should make the same, if we should make it different. Uh, but I think we, we, we need to be flexible enough to maintain the space as a repository platform that can be able to be integrated in different uh, services uh, and I think that the flexibility and the simplicity will be the, the core values we should consider this way. Um, another aspect is also the, the real need about this uh, new model of the space because uh, we are developing now um, some tests regarding the use of uh, different types of metadata, metadata not in a flat uh, structure. Um, and we really need to have a global solution for the space and not uh, only some plugins or developments for that. So I think it's important to try to now, try to focus this and try to, to make this a little bit of a, a reality in this space, or at least how can we make this a reality of this space um, and, and make the next steps for that. 
Yeah, thank you, Jose. And I agree with that. I'd like to turn this into a reality as soon as we can, uh, but with the realization that obviously we want to try and make sure that we're going towards the 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 same uh, the same vision and the and we're um, aligning the the work with towards that vision, of course, which is pretty much I think what you were saying as well. So I think we're all in agreement on that. Um, are others? Do others want to add, add any thoughts into here? And, I, and you'll notice I did add a note in here onto the, the table uh, based on what Claudio said, just so that we don't forget that and so others not able to attend the meeting know that this is the reason behind the table structure. Okay, thank you. I, I was just, uh, uh, I, I agree with Jose. Um, I, I think we, we need a core solution, not uh, some patches or, or some minor improvements. We need this space to have uh, this as uh, it is uh, in its core. Um, so, so the other thing that um, I, I added some other comments in here. I don't think we need to go through all of them, but but I saw that uh, Paulo, you re had responded to them around. <laughs> the table structure and things like that. Um, those were mostly nitpicky things. I wasn't taking offense. I was just thinking that the, the topic here was a little bit off in terms of the, the discussion. So like on page, uh, okay. page we're at. But yeah, okay. if you scroll down. Okay. No, um, it's, it's a it's a fresh, I mean, I think it's, a, no. no. Trend. It's down under. Okay, it's here. Data model complexity. I made I made a, a lot of replies to your comments. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. You know, Sorry. That, that, that's okay. Yeah, I think we're I think we're generally in agreement there as well. I was just wanting to note that I think that section that I had highlighted here, that that section in yellow, um, probably we just need to either clean that up or or strike it altogether for the most part because I think it's very misleading how it's stated. Yeah, um, I, I it's agree. Kind of implying that that we're that more tables is bad in some way um, <laughs> and that we would accept DSpace Crystal at all as, as it is, which I don't think we've ever really discussed yet. Um, so so it's just kind of worth noting that I think that the, the structure and configurations area here, um, we might want to kind of look at a little bit more as to whether this is important to keep as part of this document um, or what the main point is, what the goal I, I, is I was, here. I, I was hoping that Andrea have some little time to, to look into this document and make some yep. comments. Um, but because I, I, I just make uh, make it available on the tw Tuesday, right? Tuesday, mm -hmm. Wednesday. Uh, I, I know you have a little time to, to look it, into it. Um, so, um, the, the, but the, the document it's open. Anyone who can can make some comments and, and whatever he he needs or feels like it must be changed. Um, but but initially, when I, I wrote this, I wasn't. Um, my purpose was not to to, to refer the, to the number of tables, but uh, I, I I eventually put the, the number of tables. Uh, but I, I saw the, that this space crease has uh, some redundancy on the the, the structure. Uh, these twenty two tables they they also repeat for other entity type. Uh, for I, I was uh, researcher page on the researcher page or, or organization unit you have the same uh, you have a, a pattern that repeats for every uh, type of entity mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not sure why they do that but I think uh, because Probably because of the, their structure. I, I don't know. I don't know. 
Yeah, it could be this is something we should wait um, for Andrea's feedback on, but it's probably better. Yeah, I think rather than just noting a number of tables, we probably need to look at this a little bit more deeply uh, to understand um, they, they, how it is. They have a lot of tables related to properties, box, tabs. Uh, right. Some, some Thing that is related to the the appearance uh, layer, to the the, the interface. Yes, uh, it's uh, uh, it's for uh, giving the the administrative user uh, the the capability of configuring uh, not only the entities but also how the single attributes has to be managed. Uh, also, uh, as concerns uh, um, uh, user interface rendering. Okay. Right, so they're kind of user interface presentation related um, in a lot of ways, which is what you noted here, Paolo. Yes, yes. Um, but I think that's important to, to, to kind of, we might want to tease this apart a little bit or, or dig a little bit deeper here because I think it's important not to just say, um, yes. Yes, space Chris has um, has this many tables. I think it's more <laughs> important about how many tables are really related to the user interface aspects, and how many tables are more related to the data model aspects. Uh, because um, I think uh, in this way uh, uh, there are much uh, much more users than can configure the um, uh, the user interface also without any uh, expertise in database modeling. Because right. uh, if you talk on tabs, boxes, uh, there are, these are concepts that are more familiar to every kind of user instead of tables, attributes, uh, in, uh, referential integrity, and so on. So uh, I think this kind of mixing uh, database concepts and user interface concepts can help many users in uh, uh, being able to configure their uh, this space Chris instances, even if they, uh, they don't know anything about database modeling. Yep, and I think, sorry. Go sorry. ahead, Paolo. No, one, one of the, the, the comments that I put in uh, one, uh, in this thread uh, is the, I think uh, we should uh, draw a line where, uh, where we want or, or where we, we want our database or the, the space data, database uh, to, to be able to, to store what, what is the, the, the bounds or the, the limits. And I think one limit is the 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 presentation layer. I think it 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 should be outside the this space database. I it think should... that starts to get. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Finish your. Sorry, thought. sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I, I think I <laughs> I said my my idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I think my response to that would be that this is starting to get into a use use case question. Yes. Um, to me. So it's really a matter of like Claudio said, the purpose here is to uh, make the the um, make DSpace Chris much more configurable without having to touch code or the data model or anything like that. Um, that's what these tables exist for. Um, so if that is an important use case for DSpace itself, if we want users to be able to to manage the data model to some extent, to add new types of entities um, or manage entity properties um, in the administrative user interface, then I think that's where the model that, that the DSpace Chris system has uh, starts to make a lot of sense because that's the use case they're trying to meet. But if we don't feel that use case is important to DSpace out of the box, that the DSpace, does, DSpace normally would not need to add new properties to entities or manage new types of entities, then that's where we could draw that line as you're implying, Paulo. Um, uh, uh, go ahead. Probably Jose is the best person to, to speak about it because uh, he uh, ran uh, several configurations of, of this space, uh, Chris, and he, he need to, to, to make some, uh, 
interface alignments and but, but uh, my point here is that uh, to me <laughs> to me as a this space uh, administrator uh, i don't think users want to do that but this is my opinion not jose jose has pro probably a, a other opinion um y yes in part as a I think this is not a, a, a main priority first to have the possibility to configure um, some aspects. Um, if we have these aspects um, available online to be configured, as we have now in many other CMEs, for example, um, I think that maybe we, we can have this some kind of possibilities to configure this online but the way we store the information on the database or in any other uh, file for example local file uh, can be different um, to to be able to have a, a better structure on the on the database but also considering the, the normal implementation of a repository and considering also what we have right now, uh, what this space now provides, for example, if, if I want to configure uh, an input forms, I need to edit an XML file. I do it one time, maybe two times per year, so we can change or configure uh, something else or add some uh, collections, for example, to a specific form. I think we can, for example, easily have this on the user interface, but we, if we don't have, and uh, if we, we have something easy to configure um, for this kind of uh, uh, aspects that we made one or two times per year, I think it's not a critical aspect to have it uh, on the user interface um anyway i think in the future it's normal and i think the recent um, features goes this way it's basically to have a, a a dashboard of administration of the whole repository where we can configure uh, associate uh, things on the user interface by now, for example, we can register new metadata schema, add some elements, qualifiers, etc. Um, so I think in the future we, we will be able to do something uh, similar also for the aspects of the entities or objects to the space. Um, but I think also it, it's not a, some kind of a mandatory feature to to that and also uh, i think at least uh, considering the the context of institutional repositories for scientific outputs we we can have uh, as i have already said in the last meeting i think some kind of uh, predefined configurations for specific use cases of the repository so if we have a, a scientific repository we can have specific objects that we can we, we can input or fill in the database to create a structure that is usually used for uh, an institutional repository if we have something more focused on research data or uh, digital library or educational resources we can have other different types of pre-configurations for example for the repository and I think this as a way where we can give to the, the developer that will install the desk space something that is almost ready to use. And I remember, for example, when I, I started looking for the space maybe 10, 12 years ago, uh, I remember the, the blue uh, layout with the desk space logo. Uh, that we can see in many, many, many configurations and installations of the space because people don't have the capacity or the possibility 
or I don't know, um, to just change the DSPACE logo and put the institutional logo. But if we have this configured in the administration, for example, just to upload an image in a dimensions that can be fit for a specific logo, it will be easy to configure. Um, but also, this is something that we make one time per year. So, and until now, we don't have yet this functionality up to this. Or point. once in a, a lifetime. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so, uh, if, if we look, for example, I, I make sometimes the the comparison with the, the current CMS like WordPress or Drupal or any others, that we can easily choose a different template. We can easily put some CSS, select a specific color for the other, change the logo, um, and we, we do this uh, easily on any blog system. So I think we, we should think uh, but, but José, yes. José yes. I, I don't know uh, uh, what others might think about it, but, but uh, um, this space 7 ha has uh, a new user interface and should, should the, the, the space core support uh, that uh, configurations or, no. or should no, no, really now no not yet I think because it's not something that I consider uh, mandatory or uh, a priority Let, let's, can, can you see my my screen what what I am sharing do you see yes, a, yes. Val Valentina studio no. No, we no. see the day space entities technical yeah. analysis. Mm, let me stop sharing then try to share. So so while you're doing that Paulo, I do want to first off thanks uh, thanks for sharing that that point of view Jose. Um uh, the one thing I will note though is ironically while while you say that these things are not very as important or they only get changed infrequently. Ironically, um, the requests that I hear most from DSpace users, from like DCAT and from other folks at conferences, is they want to be able to do things like manage those input forms, manage the submission process and things from the admin user interface. Yes. They don't want to have to yes. touch those files. They want to be able to manage the header and yes. footer from the user interface. I, I um, also agree. Yep. But, but a, the, considering the, this context right now, I think it's more important to to first give priority to changing the way the space uh, has the information and the data model of the space to be focused on this new metadata schema, um, the possibility to include other entities. For me, I think it's more important this by now that the other functionality that I also had proposed on, on this. Um, this exercise we have already done, um, but I, I I think if we consider this as a use case to be developed right now, um, maybe I, I I think we can put this on a, a second moment of development. You know, I I would agree. Those you know configurability from the user interface issues are all valuable uh, but they seem like they're out of scope for the project that's in front of us right now yeah yeah i think the only reason i'm poking at this a little bit i agree with that i agree that it's less it's lower priority but the only reason i'm poking at this is because um it goes back to this this section of the document that that paulo had mentioned and that i had that i had commented on is that uh, there was a discussion here about DSpace, Chris has all these extra tables to store this user administrative stuff, user interface administrative stuff. Um, so the reason I'm poking at this is because I think we should be analyzing that as part of the, the bigger picture here somewhat. We, we can decide that we don't want to do it right now, 
but I think since DSpace Chris has this functionality in there, it is worth analyzing um, whether the way DSpace Chris does this aligns with the views of how we think DSpace should go forward, what that roadmap or vision looks like, or whether it um, doesn't align as well as it may, as it may, because they already have these features. Um, I don't see a purpose to just kind of like throwing them aside um, without analysis at this point in time. I think we should right. analyze them, decide whether they're worth um, keeping as part of this. And if they're not, then that's fine. Then we can set them aside. Does that makes sense? Yeah, that, that makes sense. But, but um, a, as I see it, they develop uh, this whole bunch of, of stuff that are supporting, uh, supported in their structure. Right, if, right. But, but, but the way I read this document, I agree with that, Paulo. It's their structure. But, but in the default structure and configurations where you analyze DSpace's Chris structure versus DSpace's structure, um, that is where I'm kind of um, poking at this again is because okay. I think that you're, you're saying that the DSpace Chris structure is complex, but part of the reason it's complex is to be able to support this use case. Um, yes. if, if, we're, if we're looking at the, the complexity versus the versus just how the DSpace model is, I think we need to analyze um, which parts of DSpace Chris are for this specific use case of the admin user interface and which parts of DSpace Chris are just for the data model. Because we're analyzing them at two different levels right now. Um, and that's where I've worried, is that I think that we're gonna throw out DSpace Chris to some extent because we're gonna say it's too complex. Um, uh, we don't need all these tables and we're going to try and build it ourselves and as we build it ourselves we're going to realize that down the line as we get to DSpace 8 or DSpace 9 and we want this complexity in this admin UI we have to go to the same the same sort of route perhaps, uh, so perhaps. That, that's where I'm trying to get at <laughs> per perhaps perhaps uh, Bolini sh should be in this meeting to to yeah, I think we need to have Andrea's view on this as well. But I see Levin joined too. Levin, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I just unmuted actually. I didn't know if you could see that. But yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying, Tim, that we should definitely analyze it because it is a very wanted feature in DSpace. Mm -hmm. um, but I... My, my first, the, the first thought, and it could be wrong, but the first thought that came up in my head when you said that was that I think that maybe the, the Angular UI will give us other opportunities here um, and where you don't necessarily have to store it in this way in the database. So my first reflex was also to think like, okay, let's first of all keep the way that the current DSpace uh, storage and configuration works, because even though it's something that a lot of people want to be able to do from the user interface, um, mm -hmm. building that and having it be very stable and working well is not necessarily easy. And in what uh, For Science now has in the DSpace Chris implementation, the back end is something that we can consider, but we would have to rewrite the whole front end anyway. So, mostly thinking about stability, I think it would be better to keep it simpler for now, but definitely have this as a part two, not as a lower priority, but as a part two thing um, to be tackled right after we have entities and we have. Um, entities implemented with the configuration mechanisms that exist today and then take a, a, a look at because um, I mean, it's not only the input forms there are also a lot of other things in a dspace config that people are often asking about to be able to do that in the user interface and right. I think it's a, a, a big block of work and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly afraid with first stability and secondly that we're going to have a timeline of in three years we'll have this done if, if we include this now. And, and I agree with you. Perhaps uh, uh, Angular can give, you, give, give us a, a, an answer that we currently don't have with the space Chris as it is. Uh, perhaps. 
Yeah, I'm not as confident on that myself. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, knowing the angular way that things work. Um, yeah, but for example, you could have a mechanism where you, you build all of that and store it in, I forget the names it Redux or that, that data model um, in the JavaScript and then send it as one write to, um, I mean, it will work slightly different. I mean, I don't want to go into to yeah. technical detail, but it, you have more opportunities there. and. There might even be for Angular certain things available as libraries to do this. Plus, you can do inline editing. You can do immediate saving of things. Like you don't have to press a button. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we don't have to get into it too much. I get the point, and I do agree that you're right. We don't want to make this a, a three, four year, five year project um, to try and get this implemented or get it started. Um, so maybe maybe the best way to go forward with this is to uh, look back at at this analysis document that Paulo wrote up and and start to tease apart um, which things are this the second tier the second step the 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 admin user interface things and which things are actually just getting the basic data model changes in place. Yes, that that sounds good. I think. I really think at this point, we should separate the two projects and just keep in mind with the first project not to, you know, that, that we should avoid making trouble for ourselves later on when we're designing things. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, so I think that's what, what, I, what is lacking right now here somewhat um, is that it, it's kind of all kind of lumped together, especially in that default structure and configuration section, which is where I added all those comments. Because I think we need to, to change this so it's more talking about the default structure and configurations only related to the data model, that basic data model, that first step, that first stage, um, and then separate out uh, the user interface question uh, for that second stage. When you, when you refer to the uh, related only with the data model, mm -hmm. uh, only specific with uh, entity management or something like that level. Right. Yeah, it's the entity management. It's it, well, it's it's anything that doesn't have to do with the user interface management. So okay. it's more around storing the entities at a basic level, which is what we're talking about as the highest priority here. So how does DSpace Chris store the entities at a basic level? versus um, how could we achieve that in DSpace, um, knowing and then looking at that um, uh, and knowing that we also have the second stage that will be coming up eventually, which is more around, okay, then, you know, what would the second stage look like where we can start to uh, deal with administrative capabilities at the user interface level, but kind of just separating those out into two stages more clearly um, so that we could analyze them a little bit easier uh, lumping them together, I think, is is too confusing, at least to me. Okay. Okay. Um, did, did, I just sorry. want to say one thing. So sorry, Paolo. Um, so I, what I think would be best at this point is to have, um, uh, like you said, focus on on how the the entities are stored, how the relationships are stored, etc., and then keep. Um, everything else in line with how DSpace works right now so that we can easily tackle it as a, a follow-up project. So if we make sure that if when you build or when you fill out the, the metadata for an author object, for example, that you use the same mechanism and an and input forms uh, dash author dot XML using the same boxes, the same thing, so that, at some, if, that after this project, we say, okay, now we're going to go and take a look at how to do all of this in the user interface that we just have to do, have to replace that underlying system and the user interface for the input forms um, and that everything is replaced all at once so that we don't do anything that's in between of what we have now in DSpace or what DSpace Chris does. It should be one of the two, but nothing in between. That's, that's something I was... Uh, Right, so we don't want to build something else that's going to be temporary, essentially. Yeah, because if you do it ex completely in line with input forms, like you could use the same elements, the one box, the two box, and, 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 mm -hmm. and use the metadata registry and have a metadata registry 
um, schema separate for authors. And so you're just extending it slightly to support multiple entities. And then later on, we don't make it too difficult for ourselves to do something um, to have that be implemented in the UI. Um, to, to have it customizable in the UI and just only have, I mean, in, in theory, you could start that second project in parallel and, and it would just work because if you reuse right. what we have already, then you don't really have to think about anything new. Um, and, and those two things could happen in parallel. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I agree with that. And I think it's that first stage that we need to analyze a little bit more into how we would get to that that sort of first stage and whether DSpace Chris's structure helps us get there better or is something we could build off of or whether we feel that it's more of an inspiration to build, to modify the existing data model in ways that are laid out in this document. Yeah, I'm thinking about, I'm sorry to, to maybe slow down the, the discussion going through the document, but we've done something similar in, in other projects with data sets and things like that. and the extension you have to, to build is to extend how you make the relationship between different objects in the whole submission steps. So let's say you're creating an author. How do I attach that to items in DSpace? Do I use the author field and do I base it on the name? Do I need something more? Do I need identifiers? Um, how, how do I do that? Because you don't want to create an author object for every author that's in the repository. You only want to do it for a number of authors. Um, and and uh, that I think is the more important extension to think about in the user interface. How do you make those relationships and what is mandatory and what is not? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Paulo. Uh, I don't know if you had uh, the opportunity to 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 check uh, this uh, our suggestions at the bottom of the document. Yeah, around relating right. DSpace objects. Go ahead, Levin. Yeah, I personally did not have the time. I'm sorry, just want to say that. Okay. My computer refreshed the page by itself. Yeah, so do you want to go over those briefly? Or, or I'm noting we also do only have 10 minutes left here. Um, I can do uh, that uh, revision briefly. But my, yeah, my computer uh, uh, refreshed the page. I don't know why. Okay. But it, it might be more useful then to do that when Andrea is also present in the meeting because he okay. will definitely be able to give more input on this. Because okay. there was one other thing I, I wanted to, to, to discuss here on a more strategic level. Um, and that is um, right now we're, you know, DSpace Chris is like a full flexed Chris where you also have the use case where a lot of institutions have a Chris system. Mm -hmm. whether they bought it or not. And that we also need to think about supporting that use case so that uh, DSpace Chris or DSpace with Chris functionality is also useful for universities that have a Chris system where they actually just put in all the data that comes from their Chris system and they don't have, they don't necessarily need extensive user interfaces um, to describe the objects, to make the relationships. Um, and I don't know if that has been covered at this point. We, we did kind of, I recall, recall talking about that in January's meeting a little bit, Levin, and I think you were there, because I, I remember saying that, that that is an important use case, I agree, that we need to be able to, uh, to basically uh, manage um, a few core objects, and we talked about like authors and, um, and organizations, and by manage, I guess I mean store. We need to be able to store like authors and organizations in DSpace because those seem to be um, objects that kind of meet all these use cases, including the use case of having an external Chris that you're trying to integrate with because you want to be able to store things like uh, orchids or other identifiers and those need objects that they can be associated with rather than just being a string metadata field. 
Um, so it's kind of around the, the, the idea of having those core entities in place um, with the ability to then extend it for Chris specific use cases, which is what DSpace Chris is around, um, or just leave those core entities and use it as an institutional repository and, and potentially have an external Chris you're working with um, or not. Um, but, but I do recall kind of discussing that briefly. We didn't really come to like a conclusion about it, but I know that we had mentioned that that's a necessary use case. Okay, because in, in, in terms of planning, I mean, that could be like a first step where you say, okay, the entities are there and you can, you know, there's very basic um, editing uh, possibilities, but someone who has a Chris system can already expose all of that information in DSpace. Or can store it. Yeah. Yep. Most much important. And I'm going to write that in the beginning of this document that you have open here, Paulo, in your okay. use cases section real quick. Um, but I know that we're kind of almost out of time here. So I wonder if we want to plan more for the, the next meeting. Um, I think we need uh, Bolini's presence to 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 comment this document and to review this meeting uh, uh, or watch later on the, the, the YouTube or something like that, if he had the time. Yes, yeah, I agree with that. I think I think getting Andrea in these meetings would be uh, very useful, um, especially as we look at that, um, the, the brainstorm that you got, that you were about to go over at the end of this document. I think it'd be useful to have everybody sort of look at that in more detail um, before the next meeting, especially Andrea Bellini. And I can also pass that off to the committers group, the DSpace committers group, to see if any of them have any thoughts on these, these brainstorms um, around data modeling. Um, and perhaps we can concentrate more on that for the next meeting. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Could could I also ask about the the Aircap team? Um, what what is your current timeline for for this project? But maybe that was a bad question to ask. <laughs> Joao wants this uh, for yesterday. So <laughs> <laughs> starting yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, I think all this discussion is very useful, of course, and, and we need to, to do it. Uh, but uh, we still have some concerns regarding the following uh, steps, uh, because this is the fifth uh, meeting. And I think, we, well, of course, we should look deeply to this document and have another session to discuss these documents and these ideas and uh, with the presence of uh, Andrea. But uh, I think it's time to 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 starting to to start to to have uh, an a idea, a much clearer picture what yeah, we, what we want, because we also need to provide and to 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 to, to um, some time to to these activities and uh, so. Because mm. what I was thinking is that, I mean, if let's say we would use the normal DSpace 7 input forms to describe an author, you might already be able to start working a little bit on um, the submission in DSpace 7 and get some knowledge on that, which is kind of a prerequisite to, to, to implement this project. Mm -hmm. It's just a suggestion. Yes, I think it's, it, 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 it is useful, yes. Because, I, I mean, uh, for science, uh, Tim, I wasn't there in the last meeting, but they, uh, Art and, and Tom told me that the submission forms and the workflow was not completely ready yet, but uh, for science was still working on it. Mm -hmm. um, so, correct. I mean, even if we would go down the, that route and, and have that, uh, as the, the way of describing the, the new entities in, in DSpace, then it would be useful to know that and maybe also help for science to get that into the DSpace 7 code base as soon as possible, because if that's not there, you can start with um, reusing it for different entities anyway. Yeah, I think that code is very close though. 
to be honest. Um, okay. From what I've heard from from Andrea, it seems like it's it's it'll be ready within the weeks or this month, or not this month, next month. Um, sometime within weeks or a month here that the submission and workflow yeah. process should be ready to go. But again, that's probably an Andrea question. Our, our main purpose is to, to have a, a, a this space core solution that can be used uh, or if we know what to, what this space will be, uh, then we will start working parallel to, to the, the, uh, the other developments and, and um, try to reach our goals based on that uh, work. <laughs> I was yeah. confusing, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I understand your point. I think the challenge is going to be that D Space 7 is not moving extremely rapidly right now. Um, and putting this project in parallel with it is going to be not going to speed things up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, that way. it's true. It's um, so but, so there's but, a lot of challenges here. I don't know what the answer is right now. I'm just João, João uh, wants or he would like to, to, to have uh, the data model set or be, to be set uh, so that we can uh, work based on that data model. Yeah, and I think there, there likely are some things that can be done in parallel. You may just have to begin work on D space six um, while D space six, while D space seven is still in progress, knowing that there are certain things that change in D space seven, not, not too much significantly, but the submission stuff does change a little bit. Um, but, but, but we'll just have to look at that as we make this decision and get this moving forward. I don't have anything the, else to add there. The, Go ahead. The it, sorry, the, the item submission is uh, uh, renewed in, in the, the, the space seven? It is changing slightly. It still uses configuration files, which are similar to the current input forms okay. um, and similar to the um, submission XML or the item submission XML. They're very similar in nature, but they are not identical. Uh, because we ran into challenges with using um, Angular and a REST API on top of the existing DSpace 6 um, configuration files. So we had to update the config files to better align with how Angular and a REST API can report that information up. So, so they're very similar. If you built this on DSpace 6 with those configs, it wouldn't be too hard to update the configs to support DSpace 7, but they are not identical. But the, the reason why I was also bringing this up is because um, you also, of course, have the fact that if, let, let's say, you would implement a simple author entity in the database now, I'm not thinking about how exactly, but you also need to learn how, for example, browse and search works, right? You need to know how um, the new user interface allows you to browse through items, and that way you can think about how you browse through authors as different entities and how you could browse through the relationships in a search, how to show it in the search. And so, I mean, it would be useful to start also participating a bit in the DSpace 7 um, development just to be able to... Um, have the necessary experience to start on this project. Yeah, I agree with that. Eventually, it's going to have to get updated to DSpace 7. And if you're willing to take, uh, to help out on DSpace 7, it will, you'll learn it a lot more rapidly as to how you can design this properly. Um, otherwise, you will be limited to designing it on DSpace 6 and then having to update to support DSpace 7 at a later time. And that will be a lot of work. I mean, so I, I think it makes, more sense to do it with DSpace 7 than with DSpace 6. Yes. yes. I don't know if that fits your timelines. That's why I was asking, actually. And plus, we could use some extra help with 7. Um, I, I, yeah. think, I, I think Joao wants it uh, in DSpace 7. I think okay. he'd like us mm -hmm. to work in DSpace 7. Okay. We are currently uh, working on uh, the uh, author profile feature on this space uh, five, but uh, that uh, we, we decided to do that because uh, 
we weren't uh, updating or upgrading from five to six. six. Yeah. Okay. yeah, but it probably would be good to talk a little bit with Drow and see if he's open to you guys joining the some of the efforts on on DSpace. Seven, because I mean that learning curve and uh, attaining that knowledge uh, to be able to do something like this, uh, adding entities on DSpace Seven, will not be easy, and there will also not be documentation available um, um, in the next, let's say, three, four, five months on how to do this. So the, the only way to get the knowledge is to um, to participate and I think also for for science I mean they will be updating their DSpace Chris to DSpace 7 as well um, so that's a way for all of us to be very aligned on everything and it you know fitting in the workflow or the the working order that that for science is working in um, as well and what everyone is focused on because Drea is not here now because he wants to focus probably on some other work he has to urgently do. Um, might also be on holiday, but um, so I, I think that would just help align everything a little bit. I don't know, Tim, what do you think? No. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that's a good discussion to have, um, and we don't have to answer that now. But but I agree that that would be a the ideal way of moving forward if we could. Yeah, we we will speak with João about it and 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 back with news briefly okay <laughs> okay yep. no problem and i have to run to another meeting now i apologize okay, okay. thank you all thank you thank you bye. thank bye you bye bye i will uh, just uh, post um, a new doodle for the next meeting okay bye bye okay, thank bye you bye, -bye. thank you bye bye